This video has been made possible by Rebus Farm, the professional render service. Hey guys, and welcome back. Well, today we're going to do a Maya 2017 tutorial, and what we're going to do is we're going to create a sunken door handle. Okay, here we go. Hey guys, well, welcome back. We're in uh, Maya 2017, and today we're going to create a sunken uh, door latch or door handle. I think that's what it's called. Okay. So let's uh, start off with a uh, simple polygon plane and we're going to hit R to scale that out and let's stretch it out in this direction. So we've got something similar to what you would call a door. Okay, let's have a look at our attribute editor, hit control A and go in and you see we've got 10 by 10 subdivisions. Okay, so at this point you're going to decide where you roughly want your handle to be and I'm uh, just looking here. I want the height to have a little bit more subdivision. Uh, let's see, not that one. Actually, the width. Okay. Just for the simple reason that it will help me to position that handle a bit better. So maybe we'll even go up to 20. Yeah, that's better. Okay. So we're on 20. So I'm going to right click and get a face. And let's select four. Of these faces here and let's see how that looks position wise and so forth now I think that looks okay so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit uh, control E to extrude hit W to push down and R to scale in like so we're gonna hit uh, actually let's hit a little bit further hit W to push it down a bit okay I'm gonna hit the G to repeat R to scale in W to pull up again, just slightly. G to repeat, R to scale in again. And Control E to push down again, hit W. And basically what we're doing here is just making it decorative, okay? So I think that piece looks okay. Now we want our handle to be across in this direction right here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna right click the edge. We're gonna double click on that edge all the way through. And we're going to go to edit and edit mesh and bevel, which will bring these quite far apart. So then we're going to double click on that one and on that one, we're going to hit R and we're going to push them together until uh, we have a width that looks good for our handle. Okay. Just having a look at it here. I think that looks okay. So we're going to hit Q on our keyboard. And I'm going to right click and go to uh, face, select this face right here, shift select that face right there, and we're going to hit delete. Okay, so now that we have that, we're going to right click and go to edge, we're going to double click on that edge, and shift double click on that edge, and we want these two to connect. Now, as you can see, that section in the middle there, I raised it up a little bit, so if we put it straight across, you will see that it will cut through our uh, mesh and we don't want that. So we're going to go to, uh, let's see, we're going to go to edit mesh and the bridge, the option box. I want a smooth path and a curve. And we need to play a little bit with our divisions here. And that's trial and error, but let's try three. And let's hit bridge and see what we get. Okay. Now, this is what we get so far. So what we're going to do is we're going to double click on this guy. Shift, double click on that guy, and we're gonna hit R, and we're gonna start to push them out until we're no longer cutting into our geometry down there, as you can see. And then if you like, you can take this section down. You don't have to, because height-wise it looks okay. Now, if you want this to look really smooth, you can add a uh, subdivision. So we could go into uh, Insert Edge Loop. We're gonna go to Multiple, but set it to one for the reason that if you do that, it will automatically be positioned in the middle, like so, okay? So with that done, you could, for example, hit W on both of them and bring them up like that, or bring them down, basically depending on the shape that you're going for, okay? We'll try and keep this uh, nice and level. So hit F to zoom in. And let's see. Yeah, I'm okay with that. Looks good. 
And then if you want to give it a little bit more detailing, what you could do is take these edges, not the ones at the bottom, just those. Same here. Yep. And go to Edit Mesh and a Bevel. All right. Now, these right here, I know some of you will respond and say, hey, you know, you have an issue here. These are not end guns, they're triangles. Triangles are okay. These, however, are end guns. Okay. An end gun is something that has more than four corners. So we're going to need to deal with that. Okay. Now, there are a couple of ways we can do that, but one of them is going in and going to mesh and clean up. So now what it did basically is it turned them into triangles, triangle here, 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 and so forth. And this looks a lot cleaner. Okay. So that's basically all there is to it. And this is how you get your sunken handle. Okay. Well, if you get any questions, as always, let me know. And uh, let me see what you guys come up with. I can't wait to check that out. And that said, see you guys in the next video. Bye. Okay, hey guys, well, for those of you who have uh, Keyshot, I'm going to uh, just uh, bring this into Keyshot and uh, apply some textures to it and do a nice render so you can get an idea of what it looks like, okay? So I just uh, put on a couple of default colors here. Just simply select the faces and then right-click Assign New Material. And as long as you give it different colors, it doesn't really matter what color you do as long as Keyshot can identify it, okay? So with this uh, color pattern uh, set up here, I'm gonna go up to uh, file. I'm gonna go to export selection because I got it selected. Option box, make sure it's an OBJ. Export selection. I already did this, but I'm gonna override it. Okay, so I'm gonna call this door latch, export selection and overwrite. Okay, so let's uh, jump into Keyshot. Here we go. Okay. In Keyshot, we're going to go to File, we're going to go to Import, we're going to look for our door latch, and there we go. We're going to just hit Import, simple, simple. And then we're going to go in and we're going to choose the materials that we want to use for our setup here. Okay, now I want the handle itself to be a uh, black rubber, so I'm going to go to the plastics section, to soft, to rubber, and drag and drop that onto the yellow section right there. And then for the main door, I want something uh, metal, uh, preferably with some sort of mesh going on. So we're going to go to materials. We're going to go to, uh, let's see, metals. We got a mesh aluminum. Let's try that. Drag it on. Doesn't look great yet. So we're going to go into environment. We're going to change the lighting here. Let's go to interior and choose the bottom one. Drag that in. Then we're going to go into our backdrop, take the studio backdrop, the one that's almost the darkest. And now we have a better idea of what our door will look like. So we're going to go back to materials. Uh, let's see, instead of the aluminum, let's try something that has a little bit of color to it. Uh, and where are they? They should be here. Yeah, there we go. We're going to go with the brushed uh, section and let's try some cool colors. That's pretty neat. We're going to bring in a texture for that red uh, space right there. So maybe we can go in and use that aluminum. And then we're going to change the scale. Okay, so we're going to double click on it. We're going to go into textures and we're going to bump up the scale here. Let's have a closer look and see whether that is the uh, text that we want to go for. You can see there's a little grid going on there, but it's not very distinct. So let's see if we've got something else here. We've got Chrome, yeah, it's much better. We'll go in, we'll increase the size there. Yeah, much, much better. Let's zoom out. Let's uh, bring in something for our green here. And let's see if we can actually bring in some lights that would look cool, okay? So we're gonna go to light, let's do emissive. Uh, let's see what options we have here. 
Yeah, we'll bring that in. We'll drop it onto our green here. We're gonna double click on it. We're gonna go in and change that color, okay? So let's push that towards red. Not really an effect here. Let's have a look. Okay, so now that's done. Let's see if we can put something onto our um, green here. I was thinking about putting in some light, but let's see what we got here and how that turns out. So I'm just gonna take that area light and I'm gonna drag it on here and let's see how that works out when it's rendered. Okay, it looks pretty cool. So uh, let's do a double check to make sure that we're happy with all settings. So I think we're okay on the material. Let's give this a nice position. And then based on our environment, we'll see how it turns out. Okay, so I'm gonna do a couple of tests here. No, nope, not that one. I want something that looks a little bit sci-fi, so maybe the parking garage or the one here with the blue light. I think that one looks best. So we're gonna go into our, um, our settings here. We're gonna go with full simulation. Then we're gonna go back in and we're gonna turn off caustics and possibly even the interior mode as well. Actually, we'll leave that on, that looks better. So we're gonna go into our render uh, menu with a select render. I'm gonna call this uh, Untitled 2 and I want it saved on my desktop. And there we go. Uh, 1920,080 is fine, 300 DPI is fine. I'm gonna to go to options and I'm gonna say maximum samples. And this is all good, so let's do a render. Okay guys, well there you have it. There's our uh, sunken door handle. Um, yeah, I think it turned out okay. So uh, if you have any questions, as always, please uh, leave a comment below. And that said, thank you guys for watching and see you guys next time, bye. Well, thanks for watching. And before you go, please hit that MH button to subscribe, okay? See you guys next time, bye.